Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, I, I don't want to say that say you, you're going to learn something because I don't want you to think this is going to be educational. Well, but I, I think you're just, a, <laughs> Link, you're not, there are people, in fact, I would say most people who do want to learn things. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, I don't, I, I'm just over it. Yeah, well, I've noticed. Like, I know that I said that I was over like the spiritual stuff. I mean, I like, maybe it's just because I'm over everything, <laughs> like learning. <laughs> I think I think most people like to like. I'm little, a curious guy. I mean, maybe not go back to school, but I I learned some stuff, and because I I kind of went down this rabbit hole of curiosity called a Reddit thread. Okay, and um, it was common misconceptions debunked by people who are who are in the know and severely irritated by the fact that the misconceptions are perpetuated. Okay. So, they I'm going to take you through the highlights that I found from this common misconception Reddit thread just to see uh, if I can blow your mind or change your ways or learn you a little bit. You think I suffer from Falling from most misconceptions. No, misconceptions? no, no. I think I think you, I think you know it all. Okay, well we're gonna we'll put that to the test. So we're it can be putting that to the test too. First, I got a couple of things that, if if you'll bear with me, I do want to bring to the table that I that I think will improve people's lives in their body. Well, so I'm not excited just, for that. Not just their brain. Because I will say, I just got back from a very long meeting uh and it's the same meeting that you're gonna have to have uh probably next week yeah you're talking because we have we basically we have the same financial planning the meeting. same people who do things for us but this was like me and jesse meeting with them and you and chris you're gonna have to meet with them and it was i mean it was as wonderful as a financial planning meeting can be <laughs> you look like a shell of a man meaning that i'm really hoping that you've got some stuff to perk me up now I did put some diet Dr Pepper. This is my third caffeinated drink of the day, which is oh shit. I usually have. I was having two, and then I downgraded to one. Bef you and yeah. now I'm at. I've gone from one to three. That was like your actual New Year's resolution that you didn't tell anybody about. But I started to notice you'd be like declining coffee. Uh, I was like, what's happening here? Well, what was happening was I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning, and I was trying, and I kept going through things trying to figure out what it was. And by eliminating, the funny thing is, is eliminating my second caffeinated drink, I don't know how much it impacted it, but what I've noticed is that if I just eat more sugar, I stay asleep, <laughs> which is a real bad thing to realize. More sugar makes you sleep? I, like, this weekend, th three nights in a row, I made the mistake of having, like, I've got, I have a little, thing, I got some candy in my house, right? And I'm usually really good at not eating the candy. But Friday night, Saturday night, and yesterday, I got into the candy. <laughs> and I hated myself while I was doing it. My wife is like, you have such a, she's like, you have such an unhealthy relationship with food because every time you do something, you're, you keep calling yourself a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the bad boy's going in the cabinet now. Well, <laughs> she's like, you got to have more mercy on yourself. Or at least just don't say it out loud. It doesn't have to be a running commentary. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should just think it. <laughs> Bad boy thinks he's going into the cabinet right now. Now, and if you, so, I mean, you could say it like bad boy records. Like, no, it's like different. Diddy it's not 90s. anything to be proud of. But <laughs> it made you sleep better? I didn't wake up at all. And it's just like, That's that can't need, be man. good. No, because I feel like, shit, today. Like, I was sitting in that meeting, and I was like, man, don't ever eat that sugar again. Because the thing is, is I Are can you, wake up at 4 o'clock, maybe it's just because I just don't need to sleep that much. Well, no, it's not. Are you sure that wasn't? What was happening wasn't that you needed sugar in the meeting. Uh, Why not just eat more sugar in the meeting? No. Sugar's not good for you, man. It's poison. No, that you're confusing it with alcohol. And alcohol. I had that too this weekend. <laughs> you had a big weekend. I, I had three. You were a bad boy. <laughs> I, the bad boy had three hard kombuchas in the, on an afternoon, which is highly unusual for me. Highly unusual, like three <laughs> alcoholic beverages. But you just what is the bad boy doing? Because a kombucha is good for the gut. 
Yeah, not probably not though. Probably not these kombuchas. Anyway, bad boy hurt. I don't know. I'm still on. I'm still uh, <laughs> experimenting with myself, and I'll get back to you on how I'm going to sleep tonight without just eating candy, because uh, I'm sure Huberman wouldn't want me to do that. <laughs> uh, don't mention his name here. <laughs> I'm gonna, in the future, I'm going to go on Huberman, and, I, and I'm going to. You're going to be a pod, cl, cl, podcast you podcast talk. clip. You need some. Get this man some sugar. Of, of me <laughs> saying, well, you know, the thing that's really helped me, Andrew, is uh, just eating a lot more candy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I found. Right. Everybody's always saying some bullshit that's different than the next person says, and my thing is candy. I got, uh, yeah. I got gummy candy. I got licorice. I took black licorice and dipped it in peanut butter. I mean, that's as bad as a boy can be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's as bad as a boy can be. It definitely. But y'all should try that if, sounds, you, if you like those things. But the sugar sleep discovery sounds like the type of thing that, like, um, I you know, people be buzzing about that. You should really, you, yeah. You should publish the study. The problem is, I, mean, I feel like crap during the day, so I'm not going to do that. Because I didn't feel bad when I was waking up at four o'clock. I just. Wasn't sleeping as much as my ring told me I needed to. Okay, but now you're sleeping a lot and you're feeling bad. I wonder if I could get the feedback from my aura ring to say whether or not I was a good boy or a bad boy last night. <laughs> I bet you I could get chat GPT. It gives you a score. To, I bet you if I knew how to do things on the computer and to do apps and stuff. You could alter could, your sleep score. I don't want to be like. Good boy, bad boy. Yeah, yeah, be like, what's, <laughs> did you get a good boy score or a bad boy score? I think Jesse's right. It's just not the prop, it's shame framing. Oh yeah, she is so, all over me every time. I don't need to oh, shame frame. I'm, I am, but I'm so well motivated by shame. Like it has well, propelled me through my entire life. And I've gotten places. I mean, I had a, <laughs> I had a financial planning meeting today. Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you now. You're back here with me. Um, I discovered over the weekend, and I, I want to share this story because I think now it's going to change how I behave, specifically around dogs, because of what happened to a friend of ours. And you probably haven't heard this yet, but our friend Ward got bit by a dog over the weekend, and it was not minor. It was not pretty. So he had been bitten when you saw him on Saturday night? Yeah. He's like oh. limping in. Oh, it's a limp bite. So here's what happened. So this is at least an 80 pounder. We checked on him this morning, he's okay. He's 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 recovering. He's not like gonna lose the leg or anything. So I don't, you know, there's a... Well, okay, well, I hope not. Well, I, did, I just wanted to go ahead and tell you, like, he's he is okay, so now I'm gonna tell the story. If there was a chance he might lose his leg, I would have, I doubt he would have showed up to your <laughs> DJ practice session <laughs> on Saturday night, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I don't agree with that. Okay. It was important to him to be there. So what happened? Did he um, give you permission to tell Just spending some story? vinyl, having a great time. <laughs> no. Uh, he did not give me permission, but... It I, was implied. I, I don't think he would care. Yeah, it was implied. Because I... Permission well, implied. There's not a lot of details, except that, like, he was driving... Is there going to be a court case? He was driving through... A, no. He was driving through a neighborhood. I'm telling this story wrong, but all the details that matter, I'm going to tell correctly. Good. Uh, he sees a friend that he hasn't seen in a while. So, like, he he walks up to the friend at the front door, and he's like, oh, my God, I'm so happy to see you. And he, like, gives her a hug, and her dog's there. Okay. And when he gives her a hug, the dog just, like, latches onto his upper thigh. Upper thigh. Upper thigh. Did it jump to make contact with her, or is this how big the dog is? He said that the dog was like this big. So it's like a like a lab sized dog is what I took him to mean. Okay. Uh, and I was like, "Did you curse this dog? Like, what came out of your mouth?" And he's like, "You know, when you're when you're blindsided by a dog bite, when you're in an embrace, you don't, you know, just he's just like, ow, <laughs> you know, that's ex <laughs> that was his response because it was his." You don't want to start hitting was, the person's dog right in front of them. <laughs> right. And you're like, oh, your dog is doing something to me. Wow, he's hurting bad. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. Did this friend notice that it was well, happening? Yeah. yeah. And what I did mean, she do? I'm sure she was embarrassed. Well, no, but what did she do? do you, did she start hitting her own dog? Uh, I didn't ask. Well, how long was it latched? <laughs> I didn't ask. My bad friend. I asked, are you okay? 
And I ask like, what, what, like, what, did, were, I asked what pants you were wearing. He was like, these pants. I was like, well, it can't be that bad because you're still wearing the pants and there's no holes in them. He was like, there's an entire, and I was like, I, Christy was like, how bad is it? I was like, she wants to see it. I don't want to see it. And then. Hold on, Christy was at the DJ session? Yeah, because Andy ended up coming. Oh, okay, this is more than I thought it was gonna be. Well, it turned into that, yeah. So, but it was mainly, yeah, I'm doing, there. I, we hear the dog story, I'm doing the practicing. I told you you me invited eventually, that I was easing into things. Okay, okay. Um, apparently, it's like, you know, a big chomp down, like you could tell that, the, that it's a dog that is chomped down on, on the leg. How, what do you mean, you saw it? I didn't see it, that's what he described. Oh. Because he would have to take his pants off to show you. Yeah, and that, that wasn't that type of party. Okay. You weren't playing the right music. I'm totally the type of person that would walk up to a friend whose dog was beside them and give him a hug if I hadn't seen him in a while. I wouldn't think about the fact that like, well, you never know exactly what a, a, a dog will do. Now I do know you don't pet somebody's dog without asking permission first. I've, I've learned that. Thank goodness, not the hard way. But this kind of shook me up a little bit because, you know. I would say it's I don't still get, unlikely. I don't wanna get bit by a dog, but, and you know, Ben, who works here, he was like being friendly with a, with a, with a friend's dog and uh, the dog bit him in the face, you know? Yeah. And the, and, and the owners don't seem to expect it to happen either. I mean, these aren't wild animals. But like, not far from it. Apparently not as far from it. I have a renewed sense that I want to pass along to you, dear is your biscuitier, to like be wary around a dog you don't, don't know. Don't hug people in front of a dog. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Don't hug people in front of a dog you don't know. I don't know about that. An owner. I'm not ready. To, I'm not ready to I support mean, that. Jade, if if like, if I'm sitting on the couch in in there in the office. And somebody comes up to me to like shake my hand or something. She's growled in the past, even if she knew him. She's growled at you. Yeah, but she's a different. And she would nip. She's like when Sean bites she, you. She'll not, act like she bites. And this has happened multiple but times. You gotta, this has happened multiple times at, at, at my house with Sean. If you if people make a sudden move towards one of us and they're like somebody that he doesn't know. Um. And then what we, I actually, what I noticed uh, last night, uh, had one of our old friends over and uh, who hasn't, he's only seen Sean like twice maybe. Yeah. And there was a couple of times where we got kind of animated or excited and um, my friend would be like coming from the kitchen and, and like Barbara starts barking because she gets excited. And then Sean's just like, I gotta bite the closest person. You know, like just assuming I got, I must need to bite someone. But not anybody who's, it was, he was the only person besides my immediate family who was in the house. He didn't bite. He didn't bite. He didn't bite him, but it was like, like he was starting to, and then he would be like, oh, I know you, you know. He's not real smart. But- Well, um, well you know he bit me. I know you remember that. Yeah, he did. And we're working on that, and he's getting better, but he's also, you know, Chihuahuas have the, the the least bite strength of all the of all the breeds, so he it's, he kind of gives you a little. Sure. It's like you've been to the doctor and got you know you got a little shot. That's the kind of wound you get. Leave it to the owner to minimize it. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of like approaching somebody else's dog, like because now I'm such a. I assume all dogs go to heaven are, are good good hearted. Even if they're barking, it's just oh, it's just because I haven't put my hand down there yet to let you sniff it. Oh, it's, well, no, I'm not doing that. Let's I'm, not make a judgment. I'm afraid of, the dog's of dogs. Heart. Heart. I'm let's afraid of it, dogs. Even the dogs. When you just said the dog wasn't good-hearted, the dog biting ward was out of the goodness of its heart because yeah. it thought that its owner was being threatened. Yeah, it's still a good. It's still a good-hearted dog. Just it's kind of a bad boy. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> you know. Jenna, you got bit by a dog? I've, I've been bit by a dog recently. Was it a good-hearted dog? What happened? I, uh, it was during the 
lockdowns, and uh, we just started being able to walk outside. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to walk outside. <laughs> and um, uh, my friend and I were on a walk together, my roommate, and there was this older woman with a German shepherd um, just like in uh, on like a grassy area right next to the sidewalk where I'm walking. And she like had the leash, and um, but it was one of those retractable ones. Mm-hmm. And I didn't yeah. approach nothing. I did like a little like hello to her and was just continuing on my way, like a hello nod. Like, oh, wow, I can see a person. Um, and then the dog just lunged at me and she didn't have hold of the leash properly. And the German shepherd uh, did rip my pants. Yeah, Whoa! Did rip my pants. Uh-huh. Are we talking above the knee? Below the knee? Yeah, yeah. It was my uh, a good thigh. Got a good chunk. Got a, my thigh meat in there. Yeah. Oh, did you have to go <laughs> to the doctor? I didn't. No, it didn't break skin, but the but the um it, there, it was really bruised, and you could tell it was like a bite mark. And what did this woman do when her dog bit you? <sighs> Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. She was just like, "Oops," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Oops. Oops. Oh, come she on. Was like, and it was just like to the dog, like, "Don't do that." And it's just like, "Well, you know, you could just." Have the leash better. Like I wasn't blaming the dog for it. I was, I was yeah, like, but you got to be apologetic, and you probably need to give. I mean, what's the right? She thing did to not do apologize then? to me. She did not apologize. I think you exchange insurance information. Like, well, if you exchange, I think as a dog owner, too. you're immediately afraid that, like, okay, lawsuit. This person is going to make me put my dog down. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. You are so scared. I'm not. I gonna... would never. Oh my goodness, I would never. But um, Some, somebody. Yeah, I was annoyed that she didn't apologize. Was yeah, that's a big dog, it. too. Yeah, it was a German Shepherd. Oh, it's German Shepherd. It's a dog. I yeah. So I think this is the application. Don't exchange information with people if your dog bites somebody. No. <laughs> be careful. Like, keep your distance around t- I think you dogs. have to be a repeat offender. I'm not. And did I just. I'm not trying to blame you, Jenna. I'm, I had no, distance. No, it was her fault. It was, I had But it distance. was Jenna's. It was, it was Jenna's fault. fault. She should have stayed inside. She, she, she should have stayed inside. inside. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. <laughs> Chance going on a walk. Hey, listen, I tell you, uh, I don't know if I've ever told this story, but I think Jesse, my wife, has the best dog biting story. <laughs> I wasn't present for it, but I'll tell you as best as I can remember her telling me. Back in North Carolina, several years before we moved out here, she was having something made or fixed or right. something by like a dude who does something at his house. Like I'll fix your chair or something like that. Right. Yeah. And it's one of those houses out in North Carolina where somebody lives on some land and they have, you have to like drive through two fields to get to their house. Like, you know, somebody off over the road quite a bit country house. And she drives up and she, there's like a, a, uh, a do- what is it, Dalmatian, a Dalmatian, which is a big, a Dalmatian is a big dog. You're talking about uh, the ones that come in like sets of 101 yeah. and they're on fire trucks. Yeah, I mean, their image has really been cleaned up by that movie, but I know, I've known quite a few bad boy Dalmatians in my day. I've heard they're stupid. Uh, they're just, they're, they're, they're big and the consequences of their actions are more significant than say Sean, right? So, this dog, if I think I remember the dog was barking and she was hesitant to even get out of the car. And then like the guy was just like waving her in like everything's cool or whatever. And she gets out of the car and the dog comes up and bites her on the ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I mean. You bit her right on the ass. And she got into her car and drove away. And then she came home and she told me and I called the guy. And it was like, I don't like this right here. She went, you know, I could barely understand a word that he was saying, but he basically was not taking responsibility for the dog. And I don't know if we ever got the thing from him that we even needed. It, we didn't, we never like moved forward with any, 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 any motion. Um, but she got bit on the ass by a Dalmatian. And then she went, she had to get a shot, a, per, a preventative. Uh... Yeah, because the teeth went in the ass. Yeah, it, it, bre- it did break the skin. Shot. Sorry, baby. Be careful around the dogs. Keep your ass away. Keep your thighs away. If I had been there, I would have stepped in. I would have put myself between you and that dog. Oh. Mm-hmm. You would have done that. I would have dove. 
Um, one more thing that I want to do to make your life safer uh, by making your, I want to close the, the loop on this, this Uber driver conversation that we had many weeks ago uh, by playing this one voicemail. Hi, this is Dante from Cincinnati. I am a part-time Uber driver. When we get a rider, we have to immediately rate the rider after we drop you off. You guys who ride for Uber can rate well after, as well as tip well after. So as a driver, I may get a tip three or four days later, like Link was talking about, but I may have rated that person low because they didn't give me an immediate tip. Oh, shit. That's it. That's what explains my rating because I always tip, and I tip aggressive. You can tip before the ride is over, I'm pretty sure. or mm -hmm. But, like, as the ride is ending, you need to have a habit of tipping. I'm always like, thanks, man. And then I just do it when it gives me when it reminds me. I, I have no no clue about this. Yeah, you got to do that. I think I'm gonna start get, saying, "Hey, man, thanks. I'm tipping you right now." Oh yeah! In order to get the credit <laughs> for the tip, you got to do the tip immediately. I feel you know? like while you're still at the table, so to speak. If any of the Uber uh, development people are listening, um, might I just suggest a slight alteration to your system? No, if the they're tip, not listening to you. If the tip you. comes in, then you should be able to be like, shall I reevaluate? <laughs> Would you like to reevaluate your rating? You rated this person. Here's, a, here's this picture. Mm -hmm. Here's his tip. I remember that guy. He was quiet. I thought he didn't like me, but he just tipped me. I like him now. I'm going to give him five stars. It's kind of like, yeah, it's a cooling off period before you rate. And then, so the, I think that it's kind of, on the, pro, on the pro side, it's kind of like a movie, you know? You know a movie's a really good movie when you get out of the movie theater and you don't know what your opinion is. You might not even like it, but then you sleep on it. The next morning, you're, you're thinking about the movie and you realize, it that's a good. good movie. Because I'm sitting here thinking about things that the movie made me think about. That's, that's a good test of a good movie. You have a cooling off period mm -hmm. to reflect on it. Of course, when it comes to Uber riders, it might start to put more pressure to be memorable. But the tip, I guess, can cover that. I have another idea for the Uber development people. I think there should be a little thing that's coming up, and when the guy does something good, you hit a little thing, and it makes a little ching. It makes a little noise on your phone in real time. In real time, and it's just like there's like, you, give, you give them coins, Pavlovian. <laughs> like that dude just did a really awesome turn. <laughs> that was a super smooth stop. Ding, ding, ding. And then he hears you. He's in the back. You're not talking because I don't want to talk. I'm in the back seat, and it's just like, ding, 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 ding. My phone is just dinging like crazy, and he knows he's killing it. And yes. it almost becomes like a video game for him. An audio video game. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, audio yeah. And then he's like, think about it, because we always talk about how we don't like – We've both of us, maybe more than any other people that I've ever met, <laughs> think about the smoothness of the stopping and the taking off. Yeah, I think you know, I told I told Locke as I was teaching him to drive, I was like, you should be able to put a glass of wine on the dash. <laughs> First of all, don't put a glass of wine on your dash, yeah. ever. That's a horrible idea. But theoretically, you should be able to put a glass of, a stemmed glass of wine <laughs> on your dash and come to a stop and take off. That's how smooth you should be. I Especially think, when other people are in the car. Why don't you just start doing this verbally? Ooh, I like that turn. That was a good acceleration, <laughs> sir. You, you, yeah, you could even add the ding, ding, ding. I'll, if you want I'll just make the noises until Uber updates. Right, just see. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's wrong with you? I am giving you, uh, you do something. feedback on how awesome you are in a granular way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to remind you that we have um, a cookbook here at Mythical that Mythical Chef Josh has written and accumulated not only all of the recipes that we've loved, on Good Mythical Morning, and that they have loved on the Mythical Kitchen channel, but a bunch of other recipes that they've invented. All of the Mythical team, Mythical crew over there. Um, the Mythical Kitchen Ears is the word I'm looking for. We had quite a fun time with the photo shoot. We all dressed up. Photos are amazing. In, uh, uh, certain eras. It's like, 
the con- the parties. The contextual verbiage I mean, look at is me. very amusing. That. I'm look. I'm reaching for that charcuterie right there. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ding ding ding! I like how you're reaching for that shot. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Lomo saltado cheese. Oh, I had this on the show. Best cheesesteak. Good God, I've that's had. Good. So good. Oh, look! There we are. You could also make the carne asada burrito of death. Oh, there we are! I'm doing a bacon flight with Josh. Yep. Josh is wearing my shirt in that photo. Josh did an amazing job on this book. Pre-order it now at mythical.com/cookbook. Is that no mythical? Mythical, mythical cookbook. cookbook. Do- is it the mythical cookbook? Mythical cookbook. Is mythical cookbook. Is it the mythical cookbook? Mythical cookbook. Mythical cookbook. Mythical cookbook. Dot com. Hopefully, you also bought the mythical cookbook. Dot com. <laughs> just, mythical cookbook. Dot com. Just pre-order that thing and then order it. Give it to your. Give it to people who like to cook. The recipes are great. <laughs> Ear Biscuits is supported by Chime. Building credit is really important because there are things that you're gonna find that you wanna buy on credit. It could be a car, it could be a house. These are things that you need. And when you use a secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can build your credit scores with on-time payments for everyday purchases. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card has no annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply, and you can use it everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted. And by the way, you get a checking account too, and with a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Once you set up that direct deposit, you can overdraft up to $200 when you sign up for SpotMe without any fees. Plus, you have access to 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs easily found in the Chime app. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Start building your credit. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at chime.com slash ear. That's chime.com slash ear. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA, members FDIC. Out of network ATM withdrawal and over the counter advance fees may apply. Call 1 844 244 6363 for details. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Ear Biscuits is supported by Rosetta Stone. Uh, I'm putting together a little trip, my wife and I are, for the for the summer. We're mm-hmm. gonna go to a place where, you know, a lot of people will speak English, but if we get a little bit too far outside of the cities, we will be in places where they don't. Oh, in comes Rosetta Stone, Rhett. The most trusted language learning program that truly immerses you in the language you wanna learn. They've used trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered, some of which include Spanish, Italian, German, Chinese, Japanese, and Dutch. Rosetta Stone has an intuitive process, so you pick up a language naturally, first with words, then phrases, then sentences. And it's convenient. They have desktop and app options with audio companion and ability to download lessons offline so you can learn from anywhere you want. It's truly an amazing value. A lifetime membership has all 25 languages for any language need you might have. That's lifetime access to all 25 language courses Rosetta Stone offers for 50% off, a steal. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, you can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash year. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash year today. Um, are you ready to, uh, I mean, do you feel, you, you can approach dogs differently. I just want to know that what I've done is sharing that story has made a difference. Um, I feel like, like your I'm wife a... got bit on the ass and you didn't change anything. No, no. I'm well. First of all, I'm significantly more cautious than you in everything, and so I'm already more cautious than you in the way that I interact with dogs. So this is a wake up call for me. And I also don't usually don't hug people unless they make the first move. Typically, okay. I'm I'm still I'm a little bit scary. Have you seen me? I know this is audio only, but you can see me, right? <laughs> <laughs> there is a video version. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm kind of scared. But yes, I do see you. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, everything that I'm going to share with dogs. you, I don't hug dogs unless they hug me. Unless they hug me first. Everything that I'm going to share with you is a something that I have had a misconception about. 
And I feel okay about it because the prompt was, what's a common misconception about a topic you're knowledgeable about that you'd like to debunk? So I didn't feel bad when I was schooled. So now I'm gonna try to school you. And if you just keep saying, well, I already knew that. Well, I could lie to you until you already knew it because now I know there are misconceptions. The way you do this is to just tell me, is it true or false? Now okay. I know they're all false. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can fool you. True or false, bats sleep upside down. are not blind. Bats are definitely not blind. They just, yeah, they, they, they just also use echolocation, but they have eyes. Have you seen one? Yeah, I have, but I didn't think about it. I mean, blind people have eyes too, right? Yeah, but they just don't use That's them. a subset of people who alligators also have, eyes. have eyes too. And then they have eyelids that cover them. Then they have another eyelid that covers. Oh, it feels them. like a different thing. <laughs> but uh, I, but I wouldn't have told you. I don't. I don't know how well bats can see. Because if they could see really awesome in the night, then why would they need echolocation? Exactly. Bats are blind. Ha! Got you with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you're lying. Yeah, I am. Their eyesight is just fine, but since they're primarily nocturnal, they may rely more on other senses. They got like echolocation. They, I mean, for getting around. I saw a uh, a TikTok of a bat trying to get into this woman's house. You're afraid of bats. Um, well, I'm afraid of that bat. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're afraid of bats. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I say it. I well, I've, I've made it very clear. <laughs> when I went to Mexico and I dove in the uh, and I s swam in the cenotes and there were a bunch of bats above me. Nothing. No fear. Nothing. It's when I'm outside. And there's a bat flying around and it's swooping. Swooping in and swooping out. You know I'm gonna be the first one it gets. Cause again, I'm the tallest one. I can see you. And, it, and it, if Heather Dinklage had not gotten necked by a bat back in the 80s, I would not have not Your developed neighbor. this fear. Your neighbors. But you know how the bats, how the bats swoop and swarm in North Carolina at night as, as dusk is approaching. Mm -hmm. Got all up in her hair. I'll call it up in I bet that's I bet that was scary for you. And, uh, and 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 especially since I've grown my hair out and it's kind of like a bat net at this <laughs> point. I think about Is it. Is that why you've done it? Yeah. But this <laughs> bat was giant. And you know how their arms are wings? You know, a lot of people, like, wings are arms, right? It's like. Evolutionarily that's speaking. That's what it's, a wing is a modified arm. It's not like you grow wings in a, on your back and you've still got arms. I would actually Unless say. Unless you're a dragon. The, a the wings are more, almost hands. Like the fingers are, are, are the individual spines of yeah, and that's crazy. This thing was like, <laughs> I mean, you got to look at this video. It's a, it's one of those big fruit. It's like this big. It's like a fruit bat with he Heather. There's a video. No, no, I'm talking about oh, the in TikTok the trying to get in. It was like, something's wrong with this bat because it really wanted in. Mm. See, the way you feel about that bat is the way that I want to feel about strange dogs. And okay. I have to make that adjustment. I'm not gonna talk about animals a lot, but I am gonna talk about think, them a you, few more times. Did you think that a bat was blind? I didn't just didn't think about it. Okay, well then you didn't fall. I mean, there's a phrase. Blind is a bat. Blind is a bat. Yeah. So that meant, that always meant the opposite. See, my mind is blown. Every time someone says I'm blind as a bat, it meant that they could see. They were telling me they could see. Well, no, 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 that's not true. Uh. Are all toads frogs or are all frogs toads? Okay, I'm just gonna go with what I would have told you coming into this. Now, and, and keep in mind, I should have given a disclaimer at the top of this. This is just people on Reddit. Right, but, but there's somebody who comes in and says, I know this and they to give you a reason. Right, but there's always, yeah, and there's always somebody else who would say, well, you're stupid and you're wrong, and it wouldn't get to the top. So this is like, this is the gold standard in knowledge. Okay, I would have said that toads and frogs are Dis, are two are two distinctly different things. I didn't know that one was a sub of a, of the other. So I whatever that misconception is, I, that's I, I thought toads never went, weren't technically amphibians, and frogs were, or frogs did most of their time in the water or something. What is it? Um, it's just people saying snarky shit underneath. Oh, so we don't have a definitive answer. No, the, the, <laughs> they said all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. So toads are a subset of frogs. 
And what is it that's a, what it makes them that that they don't be, they're not in the water? Well, now I'm gonna have to Google because it because no, nobody went in and said that they because whenever I pick up a frog, which is not common, I don't, not all the time anymore. It's wet and slimy. When you pick up a toad, it's like a warty dry. Toads are warty looking, covered in little lumps and bumps, while frogs are sleek and smooth. Mm -hmm. That's how you tell the difference. Toads are virtually always uh, have dry skin, whereas frogs look wet even when they're out of water. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just the difference. I don't think that's the. We had so many. But hold on, we were just talking about how they were totally different things, but like. And, and all frogs are toads? All all toads are frogs, but like, yeah, so some frogs are smooth. This isn't even. I feel like you got to. Can we just it. expose it? I feel like you got to get a second source on this. Uh, from. Are frogs toads? PSU.edu. It says all toads are frogs, there but not go. all frogs are toads. Um, but then why is there so many infographics about being able to tell the difference? I think it's like. Are you a special type of frog that's a toad, or are you not? Yeah, I'll buy that. What do you like more? Uh, I don't like either one of them, but if I had to choose, I think I would choose a non-toad frog. You can't just say frog. But for what? For a friend? Uh, or for a pet? Because they're the the sliminess freaks me out. If I had to hold one or the other, but you just said you'd rather have a frog. Do you want to, to be afraid runner? of? No, I didn't be, understand the question. Which do you prefer? Not I didn't. When you, somebody says, "Which one do you like more?" Or which one do you prefer? It's not which one do you prefer to be afraid of. <laughs> I know. I just said it backwards. I was trying to cover for myself. You prefer a toad as a friend? I think I would. No. Yes. Yeah, I think so as well. Well, I I don't know because I my here's exactly what happened in my brain. I didn't like toads because I didn't like wartiness, and then I realized I didn't like sliminess. So I'm, I changed my answer in the middle of it, and I seemed like I didn't know what I was talking about I because I didn't. If I had a toad that was, I don't like either one. If I had a toad that was a friend and I had him on a little leash, <clears throat> I feel like he could go everywhere that I go. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if I was a frog, if I had a frog friend, I feel you mean like a non-toad frog, like a frog frog. Well, a toad I, is a frog. I feel like I would have to. Get get in water a lot, and yeah. I, that would get annoying. It's high maintenance. It's like a friend who has to you have to constantly put lip balm on him. Yeah, yeah, you're the frog in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't make you put it on me. I'm the I'm as a guy warts and all just out in the desert. Like you can put me through anything, and then I just like hop right up oh, to you. Oh God! <laughs> you leave this guy outside for seven minutes, and he's turned. He's hard as a rock, and the sun's completely dehydrated. Him. <laughs> Come on, man! I just I know, I take care of my needs. I ha I have my I have my bag. Yeah, with if, my bomb. I don't I don't need to convenience you at all. With if it. you've got a fanny pack, you're the frog in the relationship. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just pointing it out. Well, a toad is people, a frog too. I hate to tell you. People <laughs> talk about how we're a frog and toad. <laughs> I'm toad. That's what I'm saying. You got on a green one, and I am non toad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a it's a military mechanic. You're ready outfit? for you're ready for action. You're ready know. to fix a jeep. All right. Since we're having so much fun with animals, I'll give you one more. Uh, this person said, "I want to flip a table every time I hear orcas are actually dolphins, not what whales." Mm hmm. Are orcas dolphins? Um. So our orcas dolphins. I he doesn't want to be wrong. No, 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 no. They're called killer whales, but I was told at some point in the past that an orca and a dolphin are in the same. They're like on the same fa family tree or whatever. So you're saying orcas are dolphins? They're they're a type of dolphin. That's what I, right. that's what I would have told you. I could be wrong. And are dolphins whales? Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, they're man. They're, maybe maybe whale is a big category. That's all, you know, mammals that swim. But if it is, that's news to you. I know that whales and dolphins are <laughs> are very closely <laughs> related. Yes. No, no, no. Like, hold on. But you're asking. Is it news to you <laughs> that a if a dolphin were a whale, would that be news to you? It would be like. <laughs> oh, are, uh, yeah, I would be like. 
You're saying that whale is like frog. <laughs> yes. That would be news to me. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, have I got news for you? <laughs> wow. They're all, all whales. All dolphins are toothed whales. Okay. And so, so they're whales. a killer whale is also a dolphin because it's Bingo. toothed. Bingo. Okay. Yep. 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 Also, orca isn't a less offensive term for killer whale. Orcinus orca roughly translates to demon of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's not like orcas would give a flying F beep boop about our shitty human opinions anyways. They'd probably love being called killer whales because they're assholes. Super intelligent, badass holes. That's what somebody said. You've seen like the footage of the the toothed whale orca batting around a dolphin of the, of the uh, flipper it, variety. I've seen them do it with the seals. And the seals, but they, they also like bat around dolphins. They'll eat a dolphin. Man, we have, I, I know they are a dolphin. I can't wait. But until, you know what I mean. Until we can talk to them. I just can't, they're getting close to it. They, 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 uh, they used AI to have a conversation with a humpback mm -hmm. and, whale. <laughs> and um, the, oh man, it's gonna be crazy. I'm just, I just, it's gonna be crazy because their, their, so, their brains are so big. The dolphins, you, the dolphin's brain is bigger than our brain. And it, I, now. But the things that they care about are things that are so different. I would us. say, I would go a step beyond the things that they care about. Yes, that's one way of putting it, but like the type of intelligence is so different. So it's like the, an octopus. The, the reason that they ended up having this yeah. conversation, well, they said that they're using AI to have this conversation with this humpback whale in hopes of learning how to communicate with another intelligent being that doesn't think about the mm -hmm. world in the same way that we do, right? We have, the, cool. we have this like assumption that there's going to be like some kind of language that we have to decipher or whatever, but those things are so smart and way smarter than us in a whole lot of areas that we don't need to be smart in. And then we're a lot smarter in a bunch of areas that we need to be smarter in. I would love a dolphin friend though. Um, Put my toad on top of him. So he stays out of the water. Since we're talking about language and translation, I'm gonna totally call it all the I'm gonna I'm gonna skip down to to one that I wasn't ready to talk about yet. Okay. That's the fidelity of this podcast. That's what can happen, Rhett. You can say something and it will totally change the entire order with which I try to surprise you. Unless this is all part of your plan. No, it wasn't. I, I think it's been pretty clear that I've had a really loose plan. <laughs> um, for the, all right, so sign language. American sign language is separate from other sign language. American sign language, I know you already know that. American sign language. I do not know American sign language. I know you don't know it, but you know that it's, it's, it's called American sign language for a reason. All right, so is it, um, is it different than British Sign Language? I certainly hope not. Why? Well, <laughs> I mean, they just, if you're starting from scratch, inventing a language that is, you know, supposed to be used with hearing impaired people, um, it's quite an opportunity, isn't it? It's a quite an opportunity it? to develop a universal language. It is. So I've never thought about this before. Yeah. But just because of the way you're asking it, I'm convinced that American Sign Language is just sign language. Uh, you're making an excellent point, and I'm sorry to say that American Sign Language and British Sign Language are completely different. The way that this person puts it, for the last 39 what? years, I have worked as an American Sign Language interpreter. I cannot even spell my name in British Sign Language. It's that different. Um, hey. British Sign Language uses two hands. American Sign Language uses one hand and is based on French Sign Language. But you are exactly right. People were making this point. Um, like Japanese Sign Language, and American Sign Language are, are may not be mutually intelligible, but it's shocking to hear British and American, or that that like universally speaking, that they didn't take the, that this opportunity wasn't taken 
to just, yes, let's just keep adopting the same one. I guess they were, I mean, especially American, coming from French or like, I don't know, it's just like, it's very separatist, uh, you know, it's, I guess that's the American uh, it, spirit. To me, there, to be more French than British when separating. <laughs> the, uh, the idea that like, okay, Japanese sign language, if their starting point is, you know, if you think about the way like Mandarin works, which I can't speak it, and I don't know anything about it other than the fact that there are like different tones and, and that we don't do that kind of thing in English. So it's a whole, and, and obviously like the way that the characters are written is a completely different thing. So because those languages are so different, you would kind of expect the sign language to be different. But the American and British thing, that just sounds like somebody did something out of spite. Well, it it's it's a little more like uh, pragmatic than that. The next, you know, somebody, the first comment underneath, spoken and sign languages don't have much in common. So just because the speaking populations of Britain and the USA share a language doesn't mean that the sign languages of the respective populations are in any way mutually intelligible. Americans speak English because British people moved to the US and displaced the Native Americans who spoke very different languages. There was no large scale migration of British sign language users to influence American sign language. BSL and ASL could be as different as English and Japanese. On a related note, consider that a congenitally deaf person learning to read the native spoken language of their country is learning abstract symbols that are totally and completely meaningless and opaque to them. It's far more difficult for them to map the letters to their phonemes because the written word is a representation of spoken language. So that the only way in- That they've never heard. The only way into what this language is symbolizing is the word. So you make the connection to the word versus the connection all the way to the thing the word references. Yeah. But it just feels like you could do that, you could do, you could, okay, if I'm talking about a, a, a mug, right, or a cup or mm -hmm. whatever, I don't know how specific it gets. It feels like there's an, it just feels like there's an opportunity here. And I'm not saying I, we should be the ones to do anything about it. I'm just saying somebody should. Somebody commented y your initial reaction. Um, somebody's like, there's different types of sign language? And it's like, yes, it really pisses me off. We have the perfect opportunity to create a near globally recognized language for tens of millions of people or more, and we just didn't? Question mark. Somebody responds. I've never, I'm reading this for the first time, so let's just I see how it goes. <laughs> That's not how language works. You can't just create a universal language out of thin air. More specifically, language changes by region according to the unique anthropological factors of a given population, and children add systematic new grammar rules. Mm -hmm. This is what fuzz, fussy old oh, people and insufferable grammar. prescriptives are referring to when they complain about slang. This hypothetical universal language would stop being universal within a generation. That's, that's a good point. And then the person responded, yeah, I suppose you're right. Still, though, it would be... Well, the, uh, just to piggyback off of that with the British Sign Language, there's also New Zealand Sign Language and Australian Sign Language, but because they use um, the two hands when a uh, two-handed alphabet, they're still considered the same language but different dialects because they have different slang terms and different ways of, like, holding and motioning their hands. So like Totally. They're different dialects even that though That totally makes sense. Well, Americans can the one hand thing though because you got to hold a hamburger in one hand and you got to <laughs> right. do the That sign is exactly why they did it. In yes. the other hand. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe a hot dog, mm -hmm. you know, the two We most don't need American, to check that. We don't need to check two that. Two most American That's a fact. foods. Mm -hmm. Um here's one for those interested in crime. This is a security guard. He says, or he she, CCTV, that CCTV you think is keeping an eye on your safety? Chances are it broke years ago and they couldn't be bothered getting a contractor out to fix it. I've never worked in a facility with more than 60% of cameras operational, but do you want to take that risk? So you're just telling me things now. You're just reading things. Yeah, yeah. This is what happens. <laughs> I just start reading Reddit and it's like. This is, is this CCTV person in Europe? 
What? I don't know. Well, because we don't have. Are they using two hands? We hand? don't have the CCTV in America the way they have it in Europe or. Oh, where they're talking about facilities like security cameras and like, uh, you know. Well, in like England. I, I, I bet you they keep those up. It's you know, like oh, yeah. everything. Yeah. Like everything you do is on camera. Everything. Yeah. You're signing with both hands and they can get it all. And I think that those probably, a lot of those probably work. But you're saying they're like a private facility. That's what I took it to mean. I mean, a lot of times people just get, they don't get the security system, they get the sign they put in their front yard that says they have the security system. Right, right. right. It's cheaper that way. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here, here's one. Do you think, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a non sequitur, but like you have experience with this, so I want to see what you think. Um, this is a person said that, um, was, is combating a, uh, a misunderstanding about construction work. This person asserts construction is fun, hard work, but fun. This is a misconception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. I mean, it has a lot of upvotes. I mean, what kind of discipline are they uh, exerting in this thread, this subreddit? This 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 guy should have been kicked out. Power to the people, man. I think this is. You know, people think construction is is not fun. Apparently, it is fun. We've been over here. Have you been thinking construction is not fun? I have to be honest. I've been thinking construction is not that fun. You have to wear a hard hat. You, I mean, it seems like you're in constant danger. It's as if you went. To, you go through a neighborhood and you recognize everybody and want to hug them, but they have a dog beside them. That's what construction work is to me. <laughs> but think about this. Think about the difference between data entry or... Um, you know, even like being at a call center compared to construction work. Like construction work, you're outside, you're it's doing fun. something physical. You're right. You're working with other people. You have a sense of accomplishment. You can look at the thing and you're there it is. Seeing I, it happen. I built that. Yeah. I you mean, know, that's it's fun. like that's the thing I like about like hiking at places that then I can go back to. And if it's a high spot, be like, I can be down from that high spot and I can go by and be like, I, I hiked up there once. You know, there's that high spot behind our house. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll just look at it and be like, I've, I've been up there. I've been up there a couple of times. And sometimes I'll tell people, I've been up there. It, it's, <laughs> it's satisfying. So if I, could, if I could go by a building, skyscraper, low scraper, I don't know, ranch house, be like, I built that. That would be, of course you'd that'd be that. pretty satisfying, which is a component of fun. I need to go find that house that I was. I, I helped build in high school. I bet you Trent could help us find it. The one house that, like, the guy, the foreman, like, put you, 16 year old Rhett, in charge of framing. Me, it was Mr. Fred and me and Trent all summer long. I mean, it took us a lot longer to frame a house than it would have if any, we had, he had any idea what we were doing. Did you have fun? The most fun. The most fun. We would take breaks. Mr. Fred would smoke a cig cigarette, and we would eat figs <laughs> from a tree in the yard. That the sounds fig, like the most fun. The fig tree. That's it? That's all it took to have fun? No, I mean, putting up a, you know, putting up a wall, uh, getting into the corner and realizing that the closet is about a foot smaller than it should be, and just being like, well, I mean, it's a broom how, how many shirts do they need? <laughs> <laughs> and just going on about your business, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's fun, man. Uh, I mean, somebody said, we had a blast most days. It's raining. Sweet, let's get muddy AF and write things on the boards using the mud. On okay, sunny okay. days. You're not really selling it. This is We write things on the boards with permanent markers. Hold so on. you can put graffiti. So the first two things yeah. that you listed is writing on the boards? Yeah, writing on the boards. Well, what happened to the sense of accomplishment that Link was just talking about? Mm. Being able to look at what you just built. Uh, this guy dumped... This is the same person, by Took the way. Took a dump on the construction Dumped site. a tank of Gatorade on his supervisor once. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is like the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, talk shit all day? Did you talk shit? Oh, the most shit. Oh, you did? Mr. Fred talked so much shit to us, man. Could you imagine just a couple of 16-year-olds? <laughs> he was retired. He was, just, he was doing it just to stay busy, just to talk shit. It's like basically getting Shepard and Lando to put up a house. Can you imagine all the stuff we'd say to them? <laughs> 
He would get angry, right? I remember you saying oh, yeah, he, he would so get mad. so angry. He was so mad at us. It was wonderful. <laughs> uh, He's dead now. But apparently he had a lot of fun. Trent texted me like a few years back and was like, Mr. Fred, Mr. Fred passed. I was like, I, I mean, he was sitting there smoking like a chimney in the mid 90s. I mean, right. it's quite a, an accomplishment that he made it as far as he did. Do, do you are you having fun? Do you want a few? I'm having more? a lot of fun. You, I'm almost about to fall asleep, but do you, <laughs> <laughs> not fully. Uh, what about Egyptians didn't worship cats? Does that does that strike you fancy? Um, no, not really. Mm. Okay, I didn't think that. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't think that either. What about um, which which would you rather buy, genuine leather or full grain leather? <laughs> These are the type of things. This is a great thread, man. Which 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 is better? Which you want to buy? I would be genuine leather. I would be completely guessing if I were to guess. So I'd know nothing about leather. Although I have watched You're a, abstaining? I have watched a few TikToks of a, a guy making a leather drum. Uh-huh. It's incredible. <laughs> well, uh so you're not going to even commit. 50 50 chance. You just, oh, you're afraid. Which one's better? Which one would you rather have? Yeah. I mean, genuine probably means it's actually from a cow, and full grain means it's from a cow that is a little bit better. Full grain. I'm going full grain. You're right, Red. I, I wish you weren't, but you are. You're right again, buddy. Uh, full grain leather is what you want. Genuine leather is means it's technically leather, but it's often correct grain, meaning the top surface isn't really leather. Rather, the top layer of skin is sanded down or split, and some kind of synthetic topping is added that looks perfect, but will not wear nicely. Oh. So you want full grain full leather. Full grain, because it goes all the way through. But the thing is, when you're there in the belt shop or whatever, it's not like they have a, like both sides. You're just gonna see genuine leather and you're gonna be like, that must be the good one because it's the only one I see. Don't fall for that. Right, that, I did, that's, that's important, that's important. Because if, if, I, if I got genuine leather mm -hmm. and then you told me that there was a fake piece of leather on top of it, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's deceptive. You don't want that. This might be the most useful thing you've told me today. All right, what about this? How do you feel about insurance adjusters? <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> this podcast is about to go through the stratosphere. Are you about to tell me why insurance adjusting is fun? <laughs> uh, are you suspicious of insurance adjusters? Well, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> in light of where you're getting this information from, yes. <laughs> I mean, when, when my house flooded and the guy showed up to adjust the insurance, I don't even know exactly why. There's a reason, but I don't know what it is. I was very suspicious, you know? It's like, well, you're gonna, you're gonna give me the money so that I can fix this, right? And then they were like, well, you, we're gonna put these suckers down first to see if we can get the, get the moisture out. And then if that doesn't work, then we'll replace everything. So I didn't have a good feeling. I was like, what? How long is that going to take? And by the way, it didn't work. And then we got these like suction machines that are like using all my electricity, trying to suck the moisture out of my hardwood floors for like over a week. Loud, inconvenient. And then yeah. it didn't work. They tried. So I had a bad taste in my mouth about this insurance adjuster. They got to go through their things. But let me at least let this guy defend himself. I'm an insurance adjuster. Oh, okay, this is from the adjuster's mouth. I have no intent or motivation to, quote, cheat you on your claim. I've handled a zillion claims like yours. They provoke no particular reaction from me unless it involves extreme injury or death. Okay, so he's, he's not a Well, who does psychotic. he work for? Insurance is a heavily regulated industry. We are surprise audited three times a year by the Department of Insurance on our claims and business practices. If there was any evidence that adjusters got great raises or bonuses, as if, due to the amount of money we saved on paying claims, the company would be fined millions of dollars and potentially lose the right to operate in the state 
in which those practices occur. And when someone says they're getting an attorney, <laughs> bless you, I have to practically staple my mouth shut to avoid saying, can I offer you a referral? Because I would much rather speak to an attorney any day of the week. Okay. Than some distrusting, it's a, I'm, I think what he's, he's just letting off steam here. He's like, you, every situation you go into, you know, people think you're, they don't trust you. You know, they think you're, they think you're scum. They think you're trying to pull one over well, on Well, this them. is a good example of, you know. Now we're not talking about health insurance. That's, that's another ball of wax. Let's, let's just put that to the side. But this is a good example of like, when he talks about there's no motivation, um, well, there, there was motivation at one point, and which is why they developed regulations yeah. of this particular industry. This is one of the examples, everybody's like anti-regulation, but there's so many examples of the, why we have regulations. Because mm -hmm. insurance is a private business, it is a profit-driven profit business, right? And so if you don't have regulations, of course you're gonna get screwed by the insurance adjusters because they are motivated to make as much money as they possibly can and to keep all of the money that you've been paying in premiums and not have to pay out adequately for whatever happened. So they're gonna minimize, right? It's but, more so this guy, this is actually kind of comforting to know that like, yeah, we're audited. We're audited by some agency, some evil government agency mm -hmm. that is designed to actually make sure that insurance adjusters are doing what they're supposed to do. So in this, I mean, I don't know anything about this industry at all, but this is a case of, not all regulations are bad. Regulations exist for a very particular reason in different industries. Well, I think this is really just a case of don't shoot the messenger. Like, this guy's doing his job. It's kind of like a, like a parking, uh, like a meter person, parking meter officer. You know, it's like they've got a shit job where it's like every time that they interact with somebody, it's somebody who's angry because they're just doing their job. And maybe you have your reason why you were late or you didn't, the parking was weird or you can have a defense, but like, don't make it to that person. You know, it is more of the system. But that being said, I mean, somebody was pointing out, well, can't you see that like, an individual adjuster may have no reason to be inefficient, but the system itself has, a, has reasons to be inefficient because the inefficiency in making every single task throughout the process more difficult and time consuming and confusing as possible is beneficial to the insurance companies. How did he answer that? What did he say? He dipped. Oh, he's like, he was well, out. You know, he's putting together. He was out. <laughs> he's, he's you know, hate time. the machine, don't hate the driver. You know? Okay. It's tough. It's a tough world. A lot of ins and outs, you know? Frogs or toads, man? Nope. Toads or frogs? I already had it wrong. What have we learned today? All I tried toads. to summarize it and I got it backwards. <laughs> all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. All orcas are dolphins and all dolphins are toothed whales, but not all whales are orcas. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Bats have eyes that you that you they can use. They use. <laughs> That's true. I learned a lot. Is that it? That's it. I'll be thinking I, about this for I'm quite a while. I'm sorry I disappointed you. No, you didn't disappoint me. Oh. I mean, you're so... I feel great. You're a shell of a man, man. Are you broke? Is that the great. problem? Oh, Is that what you found out? That's my financial thing to me. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> yeah, I got something to tell you. <laughs> we are broke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's just okay. I, I did it's find a, it interesting. One of the things that we discussed today, just uh, just now that you're talking about it, we're talking about insurance, and um, and then I look at like the the like basically, if I die, you get money, and if you die, I get money. But is it enough money? <laughs> well, I mean, we are always revisiting that. Okay, so. You talk about incentive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to make yourself worth more than what it, what I would get to kill you. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's the incentive. That's what our whole career okay. is based on at this point. We have to each be worth more than it would just 
<laughs> be for just the other guy to murder the other guy <laughs> and get away I don't with think it. you get it if you murder me, dude. Oh, well, it would be accidental as far as everybody else is concerned. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, are you, I don't think you could get away with murdering me, but I, I think, think I could you get away with murdering. I think you. you've made it more difficult. <laughs> now that I've talked about it on the internet, damn! I, every the way that I've been acting for years, I is, told him it was genuine leather. <laughs> Let's see. I, I'm good. I'm good at. I, I'm good at. That doesn't make a lot of sense because you don't know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's just the way I would defend myself, Your Honor. I told him it was genuine leather. I don't know what you're talking about, but I've been building my entire persona as a cover for when I murder you. Oh. So it's like he never could have gotten away with it. Right, because it could He's be too, accidental. Yeah. He can't he can't plan things through. If you kill me in an accident, do you still get paid? Like could you get but I, so charged I, with involuntary manslaughter because like if I, you, like, if you I, like gesture with a knife and it just goes right into my jugular. <laughs> Uh, if I cut, <laughs> if I killed you on the show, and you he didn't mean to, Your Honor, everyone knows you didn't mean to. But do you still get the payout? I even though you might still go to jail for negligence, right. or at least like a, a civil suit. What's going to happen is you're going to accidentally kill me with a knife while gesturing. <laughs> um, I'm going to get the cash. You're going to get the cash, but then my wife is going to sue you for the cash, and she's going to get it. Okay. okay. This sounds I, like a TV movie. I got to take an, I got to take this into account. You might need to make this exact movie that we've just <laughs> that we've just outlined. Um, I got a wreck. It's a documentary on Netflix that you watched that then I turned around and watched Ooh, with Christy. Yeah. And uh, if you're if you're, I mean, if you're in your forties like we are. Then I think you you might have to be at least forty three to really really enjoy it. You think so? Yeah, but to really enjoy it, to feel like that you were old enough to to like have a point of reference for it. If you if you remember this, when it's, it happened. It's a documentary called "We Are One." It is the "We Are the World" documentary, the greatest night in pop. Um, you know, it's the story of Lionel Richie. And Michael ja and Michael Jackson writing the song "We Are the World," and then the Lionel's manager, like basically producing uh, the the event, like the logistics of bringing together like so many stars from music to have a little piece of the uh, vocal performance. I and the way that, that the way that it the way that they went about it. It was a live performance. They were all in the same room together, and it was like one night, one fateful night. Yeah, the greatest night in pop history. It, it, and of I course, mean, it, it's so I didn't. Watch, I don't watch a lot of music documentaries. I know you do, but for me, the yeah, it was the point of reference of being this thing that never the complexity of what it would take in order to actually pull this off didn't right. cross my mind as a child watching it. I was just like, all my favorite people in one place. But then you yeah. start thinking, what does it take to get all your favorite people in one place? And then what happens when you have all of those egos in one room? For so many wonderful For moments. many, many hours until you're trying to get this song right. You know? And it heavily features Lionel Richie, so you can't go wrong with that. So yeah, it's called We Are One. Check it out. And in the meantime, uh, we would appreciate it if you would leave a rating and a review of this podcast on your favorite podcast service. Mm -hmm. uh, That's and we would helpful. also appreciate it if you would uh, leave us a voicemail with your comments, questions, accusations Yeah. Uh, at one 888 earpod one We'll talk to you next week. Hey, Rhett and Link. I just finished an online course and during lunchtime, I sorted my mail literally sorted the mail and when we came back from lunch the instructor asked everybody what they did at lunchtime and I said I sorted the mail kind of hoping that someone else might know what the innuendo meant even though I wasn't serious about it however nobody reacted but at least in my own head I was able to laugh about sorting the mail thanks Link bye <laughs>